What's going on across the federal way? It is Wednesday and we have yet again another benchmark to do. Why? Because benchmarks are awesome. So let's take a look at what's on the board and this one is going to be 100% totally in the wheelhouse of those of us that are really good at body weight movements. So we are doing Barbara. Barbara is going to be a longer workout, but how this breaks down, every round is 20 pull-ups, 30 push-ups, 40 sit-ups, 50 air squats. Then we get a three minute rest and we get to go back to the top and do it again. We are going five rounds for time. That's a lot of volume. So be ready for that. When we look at the volume of the workout, let's say, you know, break down just the pull-ups, that's 100 pull-ups. If we look at the air squats, that's 250 air squats in this workout. I wanna make sure that people, if they're scaling this workout, they're scaling the volume appropriately. It may be that we scale our push-ups because I can't do that many regular push-ups, so I'm gonna use a box to elevate my chest. Um, other things like that, we will talk about some of those scaled options when we get there. Um, but for the most part, there's not gonna be a ton of scaling on the complexity of the movements, but it might be that in order to give you the right stimulus for this workout, maybe those reps come down just a little bit. Either way, the intention of this is we want you to go hard and fast and then try to recover and go hard and fast again. And then our score at the end, we're gonna subtract our rest time. So we're gonna take the 12 minutes of rest um, that we had because there's only four rounds we're gonna include that rest time, right? Once we finish the fifth round, we're done. We have unlimited rest time at that point. So. Um, we're gonna take 12 minutes off of the total time on the clock when we're done, and that's going to be our score for Barbara. So let's talk a little bit about our movement standards, starting with the pull-ups. Now pull-ups, when we talk about pull-ups at all, the standard remains the same regardless of how they're done. So as long as my arms are extended at the bottom and my chin gets over the bar, I'm good. Now I can do them strict, I can do them kipping, I can do them a weird pseudo kip thing. If I don't have my kip down, it doesn't matter what they look like. It matters that my arms are straight at the bottom, my chin is over the bar. Uh, and when we're looking at high volume, when I've got 100 pull-ups in this workout, kipping is probably the best way to go. If I go strict, it might slow me down, but that is a lot of eccentric work. And we wanna make sure that even though we've done some higher volume pull-up workouts since we've got back from quarantine, if I know I haven't done 100 pull-ups in a workout, I might consider scaling the pull-ups just to make sure that it's Wednesday. Yes, we're coming up on a makeup day tomorrow, so that could be a good day to get some rest, but I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna be able to wash my hair for the rest of the week. I wanna be able to lift my hands over my head, not have my lap so sore that my arms only get to hear when I wake up. Um, I've been there, it's not worth it. Don't push yourself to that point. It's just not fun, you guys. So, um, when I'm stringing things together, I'm gonna really focus on trying to hang on to that bar a little bit longer, but I want to encourage you, if your grip is really, really tired and you feel like you're gonna fall off, let go of that pull-up bar before gravity takes over. Because if you, uh, the, one of the only times I've ever seen an athlete or had to have or had my coach call an ambulance um, was watching somebody go for pull-ups and their grip gave out and they went head over heels and their head was the first thing that hit the ground. Um, so I don't say that to freak anybody out, but I say that to keep in mind the reality of pushing ourselves in training is sometimes we're pushing the line so much that we're risking something happening. Don't hit that point. If you feel like you're not gonna get the next rep, drop off, shake it out, get back up there, finish your set. So um, when I'm kipping though, it's gonna be aggressive with my hips. I wanna get my chin up at the bar. And one of the big keys to kipping and stringing together kipping pull-ups is I'm gonna press away from that bar at the top. That way I can swing back down. So when we're looking at a kipping pull-up, I'm driving with my hips. I'm pressing away at the top. I'm not coming up and falling down and then having to reestablish that swing and gain momentum again. So um, yeah, that's our pull-up standards again. Arms extended at the bottom, chin over the bar. How you get there doesn't matter. Um, for push-ups, super simple on this one, guys. Hands are about shoulder width distance. My chest is gonna touch the floor and I'm coming all the way back up to full extension at the top. Now, if I can't do regular push-ups, a lot of times you will see athletes go to their knees. And what I find is athletes that do push-ups on their knees very rarely graduate from their knees to regular push-ups. So in order to make the push-up a little easier, I'm gonna use a box. 
if I need to scale it, especially for that volume, because again, at 30 reps, that's 150 pushes. Using a box, I'm gonna put my hands on either side. I'm gonna maintain that high plank position, so the same exact position I'd be in when I'm on the floor. My chest comes down to the box, and I extend my arms at the top there. The, the beauty of this is, as one height gets, re gets way too easy and I can just crank out my reps, I lower the box. Eventually, I get to plates. Eventually, I'm on the floor and I'm actually doing real push-ups instead of just doing them off my knees. So, um, a box is a great way to scale those. Next is our sit-ups. Now, sit-ups, using an ab mat, generally speaking. Um, I don't have one with me, so I won't use it. But, I'm gonna butterfly my knees out so the soles of my feet are together, my knees are wide. This opens my hips. It allows my shoulders to get over my hips when I'm doing sit-ups. A lot of times when we do sit-ups with our knees flat on the floor, I'm gonna finish my sit-up in this position, but you notice my shoulders relative to my hips, my shoulders are behind my hips. That means I'm missing two, three, four inches range of motion to actually get my shoulders over my hips. If I'm missing that range of motion, that means I'm not getting as much out of every rep as I could. It also, in this position, I get my quads and my hip flexors involved. It means that I'm not using my core. If I want a stronger core, if I butterfly my knees out, all of a sudden that takes my quads and hip flexors out of the equation. I'm utilizing my core a lot more, so I'm, I'm targeting the muscles that I want to get stronger doing my sit-ups in this position. So I'm going to start by bringing my, hand, my shoulders down, hands go over my head and touch the floor. I can use my arms for momentum if I need it. We're gonna bring my arms forward and then shoot to touch my, my toes. Why? Again, look at my shoulders. If I'm touching my heels, where are my shoulders at? If I'm touching my toes, big difference in that range of motion. We wanna make sure touching our toes and then right back down into my next reps. So I've got 40 sit-ups there and then 50 air squats. Now the air squat, squats initiated at the hip. I'm gonna send my hips back. I'm gonna drive my knees out. That's gonna keep my glutes turned on and sit down until my hip crease gets below the top of my knee. Come right back up, squeeze my butt at the top, make sure my hips are open. So especially when you're going fast, it's easy to find yourself not standing all the way up and think that you're doing the thing, but you're not doing the thing. So I want you to squeeze your butt at the top, make sure you're standing all the way up at the top of every air squat, even when you're trying to cruise and go quickly. So those are the simple standards for our workout today. Again, high volume workout, lots of reps. It's all at body weight. Personally, this is, this is a benchmark I really enjoy. And that might be because I've always been a smaller athlete. Um, but it's gonna, get, it's gonna spark your heart rate. It's gonna get rough. The subsequent rounds, rounds four and five, are miserable. Just gut through it. You can do it. It's gonna be great. You're gonna feel awesome when it's done. So with that, guys, facing down Barbara, let's get after it.